Hey Fight Fans, I'm Sarah Davis and you're watching Fight News Now Extra. We have the latest combat news to get to next as Dan Henderson is tweeting out frustrations, a UFC legend writes a book, and Alistair Overeem is next in line. In just a few moments, our MMA panel will join us to break it all down, so here are your newsmakers. We recently told you about John Jones and Chael Sonnen signing on to coach season 17 of The Ultimate Fighter and Dan Henderson, who was supposed to get a title shot at UFC 151, a little perplexed. Although he pulled out with an injury last month, Hendo wants the next title shot and tweeted to Dana White, I guess I should just quit training to win fights and to be exciting for the fans and just go to trash talking school. Yeah, I don't think he's the only one that's frustrated. Retired UFC fighter Frank the Legend Shamrock, who is known as the first to hold the UFC's middleweight belt, has released an autobiography titled Uncaged, My Life as a Champion MMA Fighter. It covers everything from Shamrock's bout with drugs, alcohol, and jail to how he became one of the best fighters in the world. Now over to the heavyweight division, Dana White announced that when Alistair Overeem comes off his suspension, his first fight will be for the championship. He'll face either Junior Dos Santos or Cain Velasquez, depending on who wins the December 29th title fight. Overeem will likely get a shot in March or April. Let's hear what our panel has to say about these headlines. And guys, going back to John Jones and Chael Sonnen as the next tough coaches, does this make sense and are you a fan of it? In one word, Sarah, yes, it does make sense. And I feel like I'm on an island here defending this matchmaking. And John Ramdeen, I know you disagree with me wholeheartedly. You think I'm a piece of scum. Robin, I have a feeling you're going to fall somewhere right in the middle. Again, I don't think you're a piece of scum, but the fact is that Chael Sonnen, you need a legitimate contender in the 205 pound division. Just because you get on a microphone and talk some smack does not qualify you to be the number one contender. Lyoto Machida, Dan Henderson, Shogun, the winner of that fight between Shogun and Alexander Gustafsson, that was supposed to be the number one contender. You need actual stories because once the cage door closes, there was actual But combat. you know the difference though, John, is that come April 27th, you're gonna be watching that pay-per-view. So you I'm know what, watching I'm, not, I'm not gearing my business towards you. I'm gearing my business to uh, 800,000 people that are hopefully watching this and, that maybe haven't ordered a pay-per-view since And what about UFC the 15 seconds later when John Jones wipes the floor with Chael Sonnen? Are you gonna be happy with the outcome of that after you how, how do you come so negative against this when we saw Vitor Belfort get a title shot against John Jones and there was no problem with this? We just saw Stefan Bonner fight a ridiculous fight against Anderson Silva that I felt I was the only one saying, why is this happening? This is a business fight that is going to do business because you know what? When John Jones opened up his envelope for his pay-per-view bonus from 152, he was wondering where the extra zero was and it's in the form of Chael Sonnen. Both of you guys are right and both of you guys are wrong and once again, we live in some fantasy world where Robin Black is the voice of reason. Yes, that'll sell tons of pay-per-views and that's great business. Everybody likes it when the UFC is successful, but you undermine your credibility when you have a guy who is two and two in his last two fights and arguably was one and three because it looked like he lost to a certain British guy in his last fight, fighting for the light heavyweight title in the world when he's never even fought at light heavyweight. So I'm pumped to see Chael Sonnen beat the crap out of John Jones, who, by the way, why is this guy suddenly tweeting out, hey, I think I'm going to take this fight because the fans really want it. That's bullshit. The guy is taking it for money. Yeah, because the fans want it and the, the fans want to spend money on it. He doesn't care about the fans. The guy turned down an entire fight to take, to like have a show c canceled in the end. He, that wasn't like, his fault. Look, that was the responsibility of the UFC. Their card simply wasn't strong enough. They're he didn't care about the fans then, though, is my point. And suddenly the guy is like, I'll do this for the fans. You're doing it for the money. The UFC is doing it for the money, but everybody's at risk of hurting well, their credibility. Well, what happens if John Jones came out and said, you know what? I'm doing it for the money. That is the only I'd reason. I'd applaud him. I'd say, great. Yeah, Congratulations. It's, it's, it's 2012. It's about he telling needs, the look, truth. You need fans. You don't, Just, you don't get fans by saying, I'm in it for the money. I'll of course you, you do. A guy named Quentin Jackson has made no apologies about why he fights. That, and it's like, you know what? The whole world is tired of being tricked by these people. It's not, you don't have to look into the camera and go, I just feel so blessed. I just love this opportunity to, you know, get, just say what's on your mind. 
mind. The people who are telling the truth right now are the ones capturing the imagination effect. Dan Henderson is very upset about the fact that Chael Sonnen is going to leapfrog him here. But in my opinion here, Dan Henderson has now been idle for a year. Had this fight been made for next April, let's say a year and a half, Dan Henderson had his opportunity. Unfortunately, he got injured. He's going to have to take another fight. And if he wins that fight, I think he'll be next in line for the winner of this fight. The problem is he's at the later stages of his career, and all it takes is one fight, and you don't have a career. Yeah, and he's you, you risk off injuries. a fight of the decade. I mean, you know, the, the, the guy is the man. That's the risk you take. Fighting at that age, I'm sorry, you don't get special rules just because you're 43. He already had special rules. He was supposed to fight. He got injured. The, that's a fight that I think most people are interested in. You can sell the fight with Dan Henderson. It's a new challenge. Chael Sonnen hasn't even fought at 205 pounds in years, and now he gets an automatic title shot? It, it just Again, where was this argument with Vitor Belfort? Five years he hadn't fought at 205 and comes up and got a title shot. He was shot. a champion and at 205 a pounds, though. That's the difference. Oh, come on. And, hey, listen. Uh, I'm going to be thrilled to hear Chael Sonnen just roll out the funniest crap you've ever heard to hype this fight. That's going to be a lot of fun. This fight is going to be interesting. People are going to start hating John Jones. And let, we're not even talking about the fact that they're going to be tough coaches, which can revitalize that show. But in the end, your credibility is at risk. You put this fight together, you harm your future credibility in the sport. And that's what the UFC is risking. I don't think that it's going to hurt that at all. But you do bring up Ultimate Fighter. Does this bring your interest back into Ultimate Fighter? Because it's on life support right no, now. No, it doesn't. The only way that you bring back life to the Ultimate Fighter is by having top prospects. You bring in guys that were in the Ultimate Fighting Championship in the past, like Season 4, the comeback. You have to create some sort of interest because right now they just keep expanding their roster and it's going to take years for any of these guys to make an impact. Robin, are you going to be watching Ultimate Fighter 17? You know what? I'm tired of reality TV. If Chael Sonnen says something really funny, I'll tune in for a second. All right, there you go. I'm a fan of this whole situation, but I think I'm on an island. Back to you, Sarah. Thanks, guys. And don't forget to log on to our website for the most up-to-date news in the combat world. And you can also join our fantasy pool to win prizes from Everlast. Just go to fightnetwork.com. Coming up next on Fight News Now Extra, we're taking a look at Cage Warriors FC 49.